Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Today I have been looking forward to for a very long time because it's going to be a day at home. Sorting out more Christmas bits. I feel like that's just going to be a running theme for the next few vlogs, <laughs> a few weeks. We have basically got um, a really exciting photo shoot happening at the house on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday next week and I need to get the house looking really festive, ready for that. So you'll have seen me starting the Christmas bits in the last video, but I'm continuing more festive bits today, which I'm very much looking forward to. I'm just dressed in a super cozy, casual outfit. This is a new edition um, from H&M. It is the thickest, snuggliest. It's like, almost like a blanket material, so soft. Um, long jumper and leggings just to be super duper cozy and practical ready for the day ahead. I'm also going to be going on a bit of a walk later to see if I can find any foliage for creating more decorations specifically. I think in our garden we've got some more holly I might be able to forage um, but I also saw a picture of a tablescape that they did at a recent Bamford press event Bamford is the brand that does like the candles and the fragrances and some really lovely cashmere pieces and some really lovely clothing as part of the Dalesford group. So the owner of Dalesford is Carol Bamford. So they're both, so the brands are connected. I didn't go to the, <laughs> the breakfast event, but I saw this picture um, on their Instagram and I thought I would love to recreate that table. So that is going to be my mission. Um, sorry if you can hear the dogs barking. We are actually taking delivery right now of some antiques which actually you guys saw in my vlog where Charlie and I went to Tetbury we saw having already reserved this amazing bookcase which is going into the drawing room I hope it looks good and also a candelabra definitely not a chandelier we're going to put candles in it and I'm also going to be decorating that for Christmas which is going to go in our entrance hall so they're being delivered right now and Dickens is being very protective so that is the plan for today. I'm also heading out to get my very annoying chip. Can you see? My nails are otherwise perfect, but I just woke up with a chip and luckily I was already booked in with Hayley for a petty later today. So she's hopefully gonna fix that for me. But I'm going to do my usual, well, I've already got some jewelry on, but I took off all of my rings to fake tan my hands and I use, I use the Saint Tropez Natural Glowing Skin Bronzing face mist for my hands because my hands get obviously washed a lot so any tan that I do put on my hands tends to fade a lot more quickly so I've taken all my rings off to do that. The fake tan is now dry and I have got some beautiful new rings from Majuri which I am going to create a new ring cluster. I've got my I don't want to say old, my original everyday rings here. In case you ever wondered what my daily ring cluster is that I wear every single day, you'll probably recognise these two little beauties. These two are always on my middle finger. Both of these are from Majuri. I would say Majuri is such a good gifting brand. If you are trying to find some really beautiful jewellery bits to gift someone this Christmas, then Majuri is a really really sweet spot because it's demi fine jewellery. You can get 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold for May, diamonds, gemstones and really classic pieces that I like to dress up my everyday outfits even if it literally is a cosy jumper and leggings for a day of pottering about doing Christmas errands at home. I like to elevate my everyday outfits with these kinds of pieces because they are so classic and timeless. They're just very easy to wear but equally because they're such beautiful quality I feel like I don't need to completely switch my jewellery around if I am going out for the evening, for example. So these are actually probably my all-time favourite earrings from Majuri. I just love how I can wear them and then kind of forget about it. It's very much everyday diamonds. Who says <laughs> you need a special occasion to wear diamonds? And then I'll always mix and match my necklaces depending on how I feel because this jumper is quite plain around the neckline. Today I've just gone for a string of pearls and then this is oops my Sagittarius horoscope necklace but anyway let me show you 
my new rings and we're gonna do a gorgeous new ring stack this is the packaging this is the box this is how it comes and inside these are the rings that I have chosen now because we are going into that festive time of year I thought I would opt for a few new diamonds this one is obviously covered um, is it called parve I think it might be parve when they're covered in diamonds like this and then this is a rectangular possibly called emerald cut band and then a thin band with just a single diamond in the middle there i thought they looked so beautiful always i always get so inspired by the imagery on the majuri website as well the way that they cluster the pieces together i always think my hands on camera never look very photogenic for styling jewelry but in real life they look great especially when embellished with these rings so when it comes to diamonds i mentioned in a video recently that I've been learning a lot more about um, how diamonds are produced. It has become a million times more important to me to understand that the brands that I am buying from and the brands that I'm recommending to you guys are responsibly sourcing their diamonds which thankfully <laughs> Majuri do. There is um, a process called the Kimberley process. If you are approved by this, then it means that you, you have taken great care to ensure that your diamonds are ethically sourced. So Majuri do ethically source their diamonds um, and their other gemstones. In fact, a lot of their jewelry um, and metal in particular is recycled, made from recycled materials and the craftsmanship on all the pieces is just so beautiful. I found out the other day as well, Majuri as a brand, I always think of it as a brand that's just always been here. It's only six years old, how insane is that? All the pieces are designed in-house um, and they work with master craftsmen to create the most stunning pieces and so many of my favourites ever jewellery pieces because the quality is so amazing and the designs are so gorgeous are from Majori. Anyway, let's get embellishing. So I think I might start, um, well, let's take them out of here. I need some scissors. Obviously we are coming up to Black Friday as well and if last year is anything to go by, Majuri will most likely be doing something rather wonderful this year and the Black Friday sale is their biggest of the year So what I would recommend is make sure you're following me on Instagram and signed up to my newsletter And keeping an eye on my Black Friday blog post which I will leave at the top of the description box because as soon as Majuri do go into sale I will let you know I will blast it out and Maybe have a look on their website already make a wish list and then you can click go when the sale goes live oh my goodness they all look so beautiful together so this is the beautiful collection of rings these two being my originals and the three on this side being the new ones oh my gosh they are so beautiful let's see i wonder if i could do like these four and then that one separately in fact i need to use my old ones on top to like wedge them down because they are a size smaller okay that is such an elegant ring stack that is so beautiful i love how it catches the light i really love this new bottom one. Oh my gosh look at this I seem to remember now when I ordered this one, I did specifically choose it in a bigger size so that I could wear it on this hand. And this is my full on diamond hand. So this is my new ring cluster. Oh my gosh, it looks so festive, doesn't it? <laughs> and yet not so festive that you couldn't wear it all year round. Gosh, I love these pieces so much. Okay, so a few other favorites. I will switch around my earrings just for the sake of showing you some more new pieces. Actually, before I put the new ones in, I'm gonna quickly go through a few of my existing favorites. So these are a real classic from a Majuri, um, and these are called the Charlotte Hoops. You probably will have seen me wearing these a lot. They are very much on rotation as one of my favorite everyday um, sets of earrings. These are 14 karat gold, so they're not gonna oxidize, they're not gonna change color. I literally wear mine in the shower. I've sprayed perfume on them probably, countless amounts of hairspray, but the quality of these is absolutely gorgeous and such a classic, such a timeless piece. If you are looking for a gift for someone who just has a really like minimal and gorgeous and very cool style, you wouldn't, you would never go wrong with a pair of earrings like the Charlotte's. Um, and then I think these are called the, the Dome with an, a zigzag over the O, Dome, Dome. 
um, but again really lovely and minimal they're like little beans like golden coffee beans this is another let me just put one in to show you because they do look so effective when they're in so they look like they are a hoop but actually it's just like a little bean <laughs> and because it's just such a, a, a like molten mound of gold it really catches the eye and they're another classic favorite of mine i would very much encourage you to go and check out the majority website because they have just so so many beautiful pieces and then some which are a little bit more trend focused i haven't worn these since summer actually but they have got really lovely pearl hoops they do pearls very very nicely the pearl bracelet that i wear every single day is from Majuri as well but sadly I think it's sold out which is very annoying and then they also have these little tiny um, pearl dangly hoops as well so if you want to wear some pearls but perhaps you don't want um, the classic like big hanging pearl then that could be a really nice option oh and price point wise on Majuri obviously if you are getting diamonds then the price is a lot higher um, but pieces like this so this is a freshwater pearl and gold vermeil which is basically an um, 18 karat gold as a layer over sterling silver because it's not solid gold, it brings the price down. So at the time of filming this, these are on the site for 55 pounds. So there's some really beautiful pieces for every budget on the Majuri website. And then for the hoop lovers, this is another fairly new pair to my collection from Majuri, these larger hoops. And I think that hoops look really nice, especially when you are wearing knitwear. Still very classic, but a little bit more, I would say, trend focused than the smaller hoops so those are some that are in my existing collection and now <laughs> i'm going to save the best till last so one of my new pairs of earrings is also vermeil um these i believe are 80 pounds at the moment but the interesting thing is let me give you a little close-up these are called the marquee i believe that's how you pronounce it marquee topaz earrings they're 80 pounds because majuri do the design and the craftsmanship in-house they don't charge crazy markups so whereas a typical jewelry retailer would probably charge double for earrings like this of this quality majuri keep their pricing as fair as possible so these on their website are 80 pounds but it says that the typical retail price of earrings like this would be around the 200 pound mark and i've said in previous videos i just hate to be i hate to be ripped off i understand that brands obviously need to make markups um but when a brand is happy to pass on some of the savings to us customers so that we are able to enjoy the products without paying crazy markups then i think that's amazing wow these are even more beautiful on than i could have imagined now what i initially thought with these is i know that sometimes when people get their wedding bands made um they often get like a little kind of fluted petal shape under or above their engagement ring as their wedding band or as a way to accessorize their wedding band and i thought that this would be see what i mean with the shape um, I thought that if you have that, then this would be a really nice earring style to kind of match in with it. But even if you don't, I think they're absolutely beautiful. They really, really catch the light, almost like a half flower with the petals. And the sparkles are natural gemstones, and Majuri only choose AAA, finest quality, sustainably sourced gemstones. So they are beautiful and ethically sourced as well which i love okay i have saved the best till last and i'm really excited to wear these next ones i've actually had these next ones on my wish list for a little while i want to wear those as sad as i am to take the marquee marquis ones out okay i'm going to show you these in the box first so these are called the majuri croissant earrings <laughs> or the full name to be precise, is the Parve Diamond Croissant Dome Hoops. So they have got a range of earrings called the Croissant Design, and I believe they've got some rings in that collection as well. And then the earrings that I showed you earlier, the little gold molten ones, the dome collection, and I guess this is a little bit of a combination of the two. These are 14 karat solid gold, so again, fine for wearing every single day, even though they are diamonds, everyday diamonds. And of course, once again, ethically sold conflict free diamonds oh my gosh ever since I first saw these on the Majuri website they have been on my wish list and oh my goodness so beautiful they are absolutely stunning 
my ear always goes a bit red when I've been trying on so many jewelry pieces but I'm going to keep these on for the rest of the day I love that they are the classic hoop style but then you get the elevated appearance with the diamonds <laughs> I actually can't stop looking in the mirror they look so elegant so timeless you're gonna see me wearing these pretty much every day from now on so now you know where my everyday jewelry is from in case you ever wondered where the bits from and my ring stack are from i will leave them all linked down below and now dogs have stopped barking i've just heard a car on the drive i've distracted myself long enough i think the new antique bookshelf should be in so let's go down and have a little look oh my goodness so here it is our newest antique and even from the side view here, um, in case you didn't see before, by the way, so these doors, this panelling actually opens up, which is very handy if we need to get something tall in here, or just if we're having parties, then we'll open up these little side doors. But yes, here it is, our new bookcase. Hats off to Charlie for finding this on the website of Brown Rig. It is an antique shop that we had visited previously in Tetbury, um, but of course we wanted to go and see it in real life, which we did last week, and they have just delivered it this morning and oh my goodness it really is quite spectacular in the camera it looks very very similar color i would say in real life the walls are slightly more warm toned these here are the shelves so we need to pop those in and then i think charlie's ordered lots of um antique books so no doubt this afternoon we'll spend some time filling this up and styling it this room is a little bit <laughs> of a mess right now i'm trying not to show you because i'm actually just about to film my small business christmas gift guide in here so i've got products all over the place but as soon as i've tidied it up i'm gonna do some styling of the new bookcase but it looks absolutely amazing it literally looks as though it was designed to live in this space and then the next thing is this is the kind of candelabra it looks a bit like a cobweb from above <laughs> but luckily when you look at it underneath it looks very traditional and the idea is to hang it from the ceiling here not quite sure how we attach it um but i'm sure we'll figure it out and we actually swapped out this replica antique mirror for a genuine antiques mirror this is one that charlie found on the Susie atkinson website it's got the same kind of antique effect on it as my mirrors upstairs and this really beautiful, almost kind of Frenchy antique finish. Okay, filming done. That took a couple of hours doing my small business subscriber Christmas gift guide, but I always love doing those videos. It's very, it's always so lovely to look through all the businesses, all the amazing websites. Last year, the comments and the feedback of my small business gift guide was just so amazing, I think. Potentially it might be the only video gift guide that I do here on YouTube this year. I'm going to do the traditional like for him, for her, for the homeowner, for the pet lover, etc. over on the blog. But I think the small business gift guide is going to be the only one that I do on YouTube this year. I always get very hungry when I'm filming, so I'm doing another pumpkin and butternut squash soup. Still trying to use up all of my pumpkins. This is smelling rather delicious. And in the Arga, I have got a very, very easy pumpkin seed concoction going on. As I was cutting them up, I pulled out so many seeds and I've just put some olive oil and some salt on these and they just make the most delicious snack. It's literally the most basic thing in the world, but just by dipping my spoon in um, the single cream and swirling it around over the edge, you get this really jazzy pattern on your cream of pumpkin and butternut squash soup. I've sprinkled some of the seeds that have just come out of the agar um, and some dried parsley. I chopped this up about three days ago for my first batch of soup. And now they've dried really nicely just by being open in the kitchen. Smells absolutely delicious. So fueled up on my butternut and pumpkin soup. That was actually so delicious. I swear things like that that you make at home just get better the longer you leave them in the fridge. Um, but I have, of course, made myself a pumpkin spice latte. I've just got two Haley's and I've got a pedicure. And hopefully she's going to be able to fix my chip on my thumb. She spent so long doing these beautiful designs. I can't bear to 
get rid of them all so hopefully that'll be a fairly quick fix so yes i have brought my laptop with me because i've got lots of editing to do which i know is very antisocial, but i feel like when you're having a pedicure it's quite nice to just zone out and get some bits and bobs done back home again into the coziest room in the world the lighting doesn't look as good on the camera but this room i'm gonna take my filming stuff back upstairs now this room has just got such a nice almost like candlelit glow where all the lights are wall lamps this room always just has the most amazing nighttime glow um i'm gonna do a little dash around tidy up in here of all the products that are everywhere from my shopping from my subscribers company video that i filmed today and then i think i'm gonna do a little bit of very early wrapping this is very very early even for me but as I think I mentioned, we have got the a festive shoot going on in the house next week. So I think it'd be really nice to have a few gifts wrapped up underneath the tree. And it's just one more thing off my Christmas to-do list. So I'm going to pop a festive movie or festive like Netflix series or something on my iPad and have a cosy evening of gift wrapping. Charlie's not been feeling very well, so he's actually been in bed most of the day today. Otherwise, I'm sure he would join me, but yeah, suddenly he's not feeling too good. So I'm gonna get a head start on the wrapping. So the tough decision is what Christmas movie to have on in the background. productive half an hour i think i'm gonna try and keep doing that just gradually between now and christmas because i remember finding it very overwhelming the amount of wrapping we had to do last year um you'll be able to find out more about this in my christmas gift guide small business christmas gift guide video but all of this wrapping paper is completely recycled recyclable and sustainable so a lot of this the beautiful bits are from caddo paperworks which is one of my followers lovely companies and they actually now sell their wrapping and their kind of gift wrap accessories like the cards and the ribbon and the tape at Dalesford which is amazing so I've got this lovely mistletoe wrapping paper um, and the tape is also completely recyclable and compostable it's got this little Christmas tree pattern on it and then there's this frosted berries set and I always love with bigger gifts to wrap them in recycled craft paper and use ribbons and things as decoration. So now the bottom of the tree looks a little bit bare. I'm going to try and maybe just do one evening a week of gift wrapping as I try to stay on top of my gift list this Christmas. Good morning, my darlings. I left you, I think, on a hyperlapse of wrapping presents last night. I feel very much on top of my to-do list. Why can I not put this earring in? Today, I've just got lots of work that I need to do from home. We've got some pictures that I need to take ahead of Cyber Week, some projects that I need to shoot. But first of all, I'm just gonna do a little try on with you because I have just received a an order from And Other Stories and I also have some bits from H&M that I ordered a little while ago that I wanted to share with you. H&M at the moment is so good, they've got so many amazing bits in. I've just ordered, <laughs> didn't need it, but I just ordered a jumper quite similar to this one actually this morning. It was such a good price and I do love wearing things like this. This one is my River Island um, knit and I think you can still use my Josie 20 early access code to shop for the sale before anyone else in case you haven't made the most of that discount code already. I've just popped in my Majuri dome earrings for today, something really nice and minimal. This will go with all of my outfits and nothing too intricate for trying things on. So without further ado, let me pop on my first few pieces. 
Okay, so first of all, this jumper, which you may have actually seen me try on when I went into the And Other Stories store on um, Regent Street. I ended up not buying it that day, but then I couldn't stop thinking about it, and I think it's such a lovely jumper to wear. I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna be my gardening jumper. <laughs> it feels so perfect for pottering about, planting my bulbs. It's got this floral pattern at the top here, and then just a plain brown zip up knit. I know it seems silly to buy something specifically for gardening, but thought it was a very cute little jumper for pottering about during my winter gardening sessions. Up next is this really gorgeous textured knit, and I just really love the neckline of this one. It's quite a sporty neckline. You've got a fairly big collar detail, and it's like a waffle, a waffle mixed with a cable knit. I know that I mostly spend my days wearing leggings and nice knits during this time of year, working from home and dashing out doing whatever errands I need to do, so I thought this would be a really nice, elegant, almost elevated knit and it's a great way of showing off a nice necklace this was one of my first pieces from Majuri um, not sure if they still have it but really nice for stacking in particular so I actually purchased last year's version of this knit as well which is one that I keep hung oh no it's not that one maybe not quite last year's version but I did buy something similar um, from And Other Stories last year, which is this one. I just love their classic kind of oatmeal-y style knits and their fabric blend within these is so cozy and warm. So these are really great layering pieces and once again, nice to have that low neckline to show off the necklace. If I bring you down a tiny bit, you can see it's just quite a nice cropped one. Again, perfect for those days when you're just wearing leggings and a knit in the house. And then you've got this chunky detail on the arms here, a little pearly buttons. It's kind of like a cute and cozy granddad style jumper. Okay, I do rather love this outfit. So first of all, this really gorgeous midi length cardigan. It is so thick and cozy. I don't know if you can see, but it's like that really hairy and cozy material, which is so, so snuggly. And I love to just bundle myself up in cardigans like this. So I'm definitely, definitely keeping the cardigan. And then if I bring you down. I feel like this cardigan is one of those things that looks really nice in the mirror and then as soon as I look at the reflection in the camera I am not <laughs> loving it quite so much. I think potentially I'm not wearing quite the right thing with it because I have got this layered over the top of this rather lovely knitted skirt and this is like a wool cashmere knitted skirt and then this is just a plain pink roll neck that I already had in my wardrobe and I've popped on the little Borg mules from River Island. I thought these were sold out but they are not so again you can use my 20% off code on these. I do love knitted skirts that you can wear in the winter time but I'm quite conscious of my tummy and I feel like this is just quite tight on the tummy area and typically I don't like to wear anything that is too tight in this area so I might try getting this skirt in a size up but it is a really nice comfortable elasticated waistband and I cannot resist the classic coats that they have in and other stories and I was really drawn to the lapel on this one I love this huge wide collar I think it makes such a gorgeous statement can really wrap yourself up and get super snuggly in here like wearing a big cozy dressing gown this is actually rather gorgeous it feels such high quality i'm in love with this huge lapel i have done my double knot nice big deep pockets really nice elegant length this is an absolute classic this is definitely a keeper i feel like you can never have too many classic camel coats i mean you probably can <laughs> but I don't have anything in my collection quite like this with the massive lapels. I think it is absolutely beautiful. If you are looking to add a nice classic tan or camel coat into your wardrobe, then and other stories have got a really good balance between not being crazy expensive and still really good quality. And now we've hopped over to my H&M order. This long line cardigan, something that I knew would work really well for my wardrobe and I just want to have something long and cozy and blanket like on at the end of the day. I love reaching for things like this. So it has got these little um, kind of ribbed details 
within the fabric. You could definitely roll up the sleeves, give yourself a little bit of a cuff, show off your rings, show off your bracelets. It's not too overly thick, so in a house like this where actually it's fairly warm if we've had the stoves on, then this is perfect. I could definitely cinch this in with a belt if I wanted to, but to be honest, given the price of this and the fact that it's just such a relaxed piece, I think it's gonna be just one of those bits that I pop on in the evenings at the end of the day when I want to just watch a film, sit by the Christmas tree, sit by the fire, I feel like it's gonna be one of those kinds of cardigans as opposed to a wearing it out and about um, and belting it for like a fashion kind of look. There is a small chance as well that I might have a long haul flight coming up next month and this would be such a nice thing to wear on the aeroplane because then it's like my blanket and my cardigan all in one. So I've not changed my top, so I'm not 100% sure that they go 100% well at that together but this skirt i saw on the h&m website and i thought i have to order it have to give it a go because we are coming to the season of sparkles after all and i don't know about you but my diary is getting very full of of festive events i think everyone is making up for lost time after the lack of fun festive things last year so this is a very thin i have to say is very very thin sequin skirt they're kind of like a pearly um a pearly baby pink it's got a really nice hang to it, it looks very floaty, it looks almost kind of iridescent. Um, not too sure what I would actually pair it with. Maybe it doesn't look that bad with this top actually, the colour combination is really nice together. Perhaps for those times when you're not quite sure what the dress code is because you're a little bit more casual on top and a little bit uh, jazzy and sparkly underneath. Yeah, I can't quite make my mind up on this skirt so let me know what you guys think. And then a couple of final pieces that I almost forgot to show you from and other stories. This is a shorter jumper dress. So you may have seen in one of my last videos, I did get this in the longer, slightly thinner version, but I have been quite enjoying wearing slightly shorter jumper dresses lately, whether it's out and about with over knee boots, knee high boots, or um, just relaxing here at home. I really like again that this one is that thicker, more fluffy fabric, just feels ultra cozy. And I have paired it with these little boots, which I don't need. And I think I will actually return these because I just don't need them, but they are seriously cute. If I had a ski trip coming up, then I think I would probably keep these. But because I do have the Chloe moon boots, I'm just not sure that I need these in my wardrobe, but they are rather adorable, so I will leave them linked down below. Well, I bet this is not quite what you expected me to be wearing after my H&M and other stories try on, but it's actually a fair few hours later now. On my busy shooting days, I very rarely remember to pick up the vlogging camera, but we have shot a few festive bits down in the drawing room, um, and you guessed it, I'm now heading out to shoot this spectacular seriously sparkly needle and thread dress. This was actually the most amazing brief because the pictures, the inspo shots that they sent me, including the location, was actually our driveway. We do have a very, very scenic driveway indeed, so we're just gonna head down the road and get some gorgeous snaps in this very festive and sparkling dress. Okay, dress shooting is done and it is currently 10 past four and it's pretty much pitch black outside. We literally got that shot in the nick of time, and as soon as I possibly could, I have whipped on my cozies. I've got my old sweaty betty cashmere leggings on, and I'm currently cooking a nice bowl of tricolor pasta because I did not have time for lunch today. So I'm having a little bowl of pasta um, to energize myself, and then I'm gonna settle right here on the sofa and do some editing. However, <laughs> Today's work is not complete. There is currently a taxi winging its way from central London over here with some products in it for a very, very last minute sponsored TikTok. Yes, <laughs> this granny has been asked to do a sponsored TikTok um, and they need it live first thing tomorrow morning. So they are currently sending the products over in a taxi from central London. Oh my gosh. So since I've had my pasta, hopefully they'll give me an energy burst and I'm gonna get the drawing room set up so that we can hopefully film it quite quickly and then I'm very much am due an early night. Today we received this little delivery box from our friends at Le Chameau. 
You may know that we have Le Chameau wellies and also dog leads, dog harnesses. They've sent some Molly's Patisserie dog treats. Oh my goodness, handmade. <gasps> Ooh, this is bacon flavor. Dexie's gonna love that. Two of everything for each of the boys. And then what do we have here? I think this might be the cleaning. Oh, <laughs> I thought this was one of their cleaning tins. You okay there, chicken? But apparently this is a lemongrass and ginger candle. I can actually smell it from here. It smells rather lovely. I'm gonna light that now. That smells gorgeous. And another one. I will save that one. What do we have here? <gasps> Baked by Steph. I think this is a treat for me. Now, do I tell Charlie about this? I think there's actually two. Or do I? Oh, <laughs> that is amazing. We have got a Baked by Steph Le Chameau cookie. That is amazing. What do you think to that, my chicken, Lynn? <laughs> Such a lovely idea. And that's not all. We also, no, that's amazing. Normandy apple and Moroccan spice gin. What a gorgeous little gift set. Thank you very much to our friends at Le Chameau. Good morning, my darlings. It is now... Friday morning. Really had to think about that just then. I did not wake up like this. I did not wear these pajamas in bed last night, but I have just unboxed this rather fabulous delivery from Flannels and I could not wait to try them on. They have very kindly sent over this sleeper pajama set and a pair of sleeper slippers. Bit of a tongue twister. So I thought I would show you them because they are rather fabulous. And if you're looking for a glam special pair of pajamas for Christmas morning, then I think these would just be the absolute perfect ones. So you do have the fluff down at the bottom. It is a removable feather hem and you've got the feathers on your arm cuffs as well. But other than that, they are just a plain pair of very fun pajamas. I just think they're very chic, very elegant. These would be great um, little bridal pajamas as well. But they also sent over this rather gorgeous pair of slippers. They are silky down at the bottom. Um, and then they've got this removable feather trim. It's actually a different kind of feather. Can you see it's a little bit lighter? Whereas these I think are ostrich potentially. Um, but yeah, removable on the slippers and removable on the cuffs as well. And to accessorize my very extra pajamas, I have got my Majuri pearl pieces in today. So these little delicate pearl hoops, they just go with everything. Um, and then the single pearl chain. What have I got on my hands? I've still got my sparkly ring and I'm just in love with this ring cluster. I think this is by far my favorite ring cluster I have ever done, a perfect mix of sparkle and plain pieces. But anyway, it's time to put something practical on because we have got more work to get on with today. And I think I'll probably save these for, you guessed it, my birthday pajamas. Okay, darlings, <laughs> I'm actually testing out. This feels like I'm doing a fashion video. I have just finished filming a fashion video for Cyber Week, trying to get ahead. Um, I'm testing out a new lighting system. I'm using... <laughs> Looks like some strange little wings. Excuse the mess in the background. It always gets very messy during cyber. Um, yeah, these two little lighting rods. But I think the light might be a little bit warm compared to my ring light, which is just so clunky. But um, yeah, I think it might be a bit warm and I'm not sure I can alter it. Let's see how this looks. Is that doing anything? Nope. <laughs> I have a feeling there might be an app that I can download which will um, make them better, but I actually got these lights to do reels and stuff, but when do I ever have time to make reels because it has got a little jazzy phone attachment. Um, but anyway, yes, no longer in pajamas. And to show you, this is a sneak peek because I did film this outfit for the video, which is gonna be going live next Monday. Obviously I don't normally upload on Mondays, but during Cyber Week I am gonna be doing a video every single day, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those. I have worked very closely with a lot of my favorite retailers to bring you guys the discount codes before they launch to the general public. So <laughs> make sure you keep an eye on the videos and the blog post because you'll find out about the sales and sometimes say a retailer might be offering 20% off, they might be offering my audience 30% off, for example. So yes, lots of reasons to keep an eye on the blog post, my videos, and also the newsletter, which will be going out daily 
during Cyber Week 2. Anyway, I was just showing this outfit in the video that I filmed for Monday and I wanted to show it to you now as well because I have a feeling that these leggings in particular might sell out and I'm pretty sure they might just become my new favourite leggings. So first of all, they're like this deep military green. They are super, super duper high-waisted, these little button details. They look like they should be maybe Holland Cooper or even... Ralph Lauren, but they are in fact Karen Millen. I feel like Karen Millen will be discounted from the word go for Cyber Week. They probably, when's this video gonna go live? They have actually got 30% off everything right now for Singles Day, but whatever discount they have will be on my blog post, so I'm sure you'll be able to get these for a steal. They've got some really nice detail um, here on the sides, like this stripe detail, like this ribbed fabric detail. The buttons, the zips, and I have styled with my Brunello Cuccinelli boots. This is what I'm going to wear for my errands that I'm doing for the rest of the day. I've got some more pumpkins <laughs> to get rid of um, in preparation for more Christmas decorating this weekend. Here's the outfit in the mirror. I think it actually looks quite nice if I do properly tuck in the jumper. It really does look like I've got wings behind me, doesn't it? Oh, let me show you in this mirror because I know you guys hate the other one. Yeah, just really nice design detail up at the top here. That's my tripod. I love this rib detail, love the buttons, love the colour, love how stretchy and how comfortable they are. Serious question though, guys. I know that I love this mirror because in real life it shows my outfit enough like, I can see exactly what my outfit looks like with my my real eyes. Um, but I know that a lot of you often say Josie is a really annoying mirror because it has got the antique detail on it. Some people that are maybe new to the channel and didn't see my wardrobe being built uh, keep commenting that my mirror looks dirty. I promise you it's not dirty, it is just antique detail. Um, but I am considering swapping it for normal glass because I do shoot in this mirror a lot. I do show you my outfits in this mirror quite a lot. I think I'm gonna get a quote and see how much it would be to swap it for normal glass, which will break my heart. I'll probably keep this panel, but maybe get another one. And maybe when I retire from YouTube, I'll swap it back for the antique one. But yeah, let me know if you would do the same because I'm very much 50-50 right now. Look how great these leggings look. Just love this color as well. Such a gorgeous, like earthy military green. So Charlie and I have been thinking for a little while that we might potentially see if we can give the Arga a little bit of a facelift and Charlie has ordered a few... S well, I like the British racing green. That's what I said, yeah, oh, I, love, right. I love that one, but I don't like the other three. No, that's almost blue, I would say. Yeah. So would they, what do they do? How do they... Well, part, part of the reason we... Well, we do like this colour, right? Yeah. However... We're obviously redoing other parts of the kitchen, mm -hmm. and we're conscious that when we redo the tiles, which we're not such a fan of, um, this might actually look out of place. Yeah. Um, and I do, we, we love my mum's arga, don't we? Which is a dark green. Come and have a look at this in the sunlight, because I actually think it is pretty much this colour. Yeah, I think so, but this is a company called Blake and Bull. Basically, they will completely refurb it, so they'll replace all of this. Oh, right. Um, and to be clear, a lot of that was pre us moving in. Ew. What happened was this house, I think we've mentioned it before, but this house was finished. Stephen did an amazing job, Stephen and Maria. And then sadly Maria passed away and Stephen went traveling and, re and this house lay derelict essentially for nearly a year. And mm. then they had a, a guy rent it for six months. Yeah. Um, and I believe like some of the marks on the floor, that was all done when this guy who was pretty hapless <laughs> um, That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, you know, you know, the nicest way possible. He, he was, was a doorknob. A doorknob. Yeah. He, I think that's when stuff like because that that to me is someone who's never used an Arga before trying to use it for really random stuff. Mm -hmm. um, obviously. You yeah, can, that is quite dramatic. Splashing. Can turn the Arga off, and we could have an attempt at cleaning this all. Yeah. And do you know what? It sounds silly, but we just never got around to doing it. Um, mm. But these guys will come and completely refurb it as well. They I actually, actually do really like this colour. Oh, I love that colour. That's the colour, I think. But, they, but they've you know, got they, quite a waiting list, haven't they? I think it's March, April, yeah. Wow. But they can actually also, we don't have this problem because this is quite a new Arga and it's electric, mm. but they can actually convert Argas to electric. on site to electric. They do, an, they do amazing stuff. Mm. They're called Blake and Vault. Yeah. Um, they but, came recommended. I think, I think the first person that told us about them was Carrie. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. Lydia's Carrie. 
Um, but the thing that everyone always says, which we're finding to be true, is that to get your Arga recoated, it's not far off the same price as buying an entire not new Arga. Quite true. Oh, really? So let's be, so to be open with. I feel money. like that's what everyone says. No, so to be open with money, I don't know a full quote of what we want yet because what we want is this actually replaced rather than professionally clean. Really? Yeah, we do definitely. We want to start from scratch. It's all look. It's even the amount. Yeah. Uh, overall, I expect this to cost anywhere between three and four thousand pounds to buy a new one. No, to, to do what we're having done. All oh, right. What what we're having done will cost between three and four thousand pounds if we Ooh. go through with it. Okay. A new electric Arga is about tw this Arga is around twelve. <gasps> yeah. Is that how much Argas yeah, 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 are? Yeah, they're expensive. I, th I mean, Whoa. you can spend you can spend twenty because you can. I don't yeah. know if you can get an Arga from here to here. Like the one I grew up with had one oven and one warming oven. Yeah. This has two ovens and one warming. Wow. This to me is the perfect amount. Yeah. If you were crazy into your cooking. Mm hmm. And, and don't get me wrong, if we had the space, I would love the extended bit, but we don't yeah. have the space, it yeah. doesn't make sense. We um, don't need you it, can get an oven especially because we've got an oven as well. Well, exactly. I mean, the, to be honest, we are so fortunate. This is the perfect setup, having mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the big green egg, a pizza oven as well, Della Vita. But, um, is this the same colour as the Della Vita? It's a bit darker, isn't it? It's, well, the Della Vita is essentially a British racing green, but it's slightly lighter. Yeah. But I think it's, it's and also what I would say, the darker argus tends to show marks less as well. Less. Like dirt and marks. I just think it'll look a lot more in, in keeping with the style that we're going for in this kitchen. Definitely. And we need something a bit darker. I think the darker contrast against the light oak and the light flooring. I think yeah. we need something a bit bolder. Um, but yeah, so um, so no, it's a bit of a myth that it's going to, I mean, I think people just flippantly say, oh, it's going to cost so much money <laughs> a new one. It definitely doesn't. And it would be mad for us to replace this in any way because it's not that old and it should last a lifetime. Fingers um, crossed. You're so, yeah. so smelly, I can smell you from where I'm standing. The smelliest of Got such bad see. breath, such bad breath. Stupid. I really should be working with oral beam on it. Mm, well, I don't think they accept ambassadors that have got such foul breath. I actually love their bad breath though. This sums up the two of them. See, he's just looking all handsome and sad. <laughs> handsome and sad. He's like Dexy's like a character from a rom com. He's like misunderstood, posh. If Dexy was a film character, he'd be Hugh Grant. Yes. And if Dick bumbling was, and if, British. If D Dickie was a film character, Forrest Gump. He would be Mr. Bean. He would Mr. be Bean. Uh, Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're so ridiculous. Soft pink tummy, soft pink tummy, soft pink tummy. I love you. Okay, I hope you can hear me over the wind, um, but we have got, oh my gosh, it's so windy. I'm gonna sit in the car in a second and talk to you properly, but we have got a new car that we are testing out, still thinking about electric vehicles, and I have got a PR loan of the Mazda MX-30. Let's hop in the car, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this vehicle. Okay, that's probably a little bit better. Um, so yes, back to Mazda, back to beloved Mazda. Honestly, I think I should be a lifetime ambassador for Mazda because I love them so, so much. As you guys know, long-term fan of the CX-5. Charlie and I actually worked, this is how good the CX-5 is. So Charlie and I worked with Mazda. I can't remember if it was a launch or if they were like re amping. Um, I think it was the launch of the all-wheel drive version of the Mazda CX-5. Charlie and I worked on the launch of that about four years ago. We went up to Scotland with Mazda um, and we got to keep that car for about um, just over a year and then we had to give it back and we missed it so much that we ended up buying the Mazda CX-5. So I feel like you guys know, you know my love for Mazda. I rave about them all the time and still to this day, when any friends and family are asking about my thoughts on cars, I always recommend Mazda. Japanese technology, the technology within them is so incredible and compared to other cars that I have been pricing up lately, they are such good value in my opinion. Things that you get included with Mazdas, like the lane assist, the heads up display, even things like heated steering wheel and good speakers that don't come as standard. I mean, maybe they don't come as standard with Mazdas. Maybe that's just the model of CX-5 that we had, but we didn't pay an extortionate amount extra for these extras. But when we've been looking at other cars, they literally cost you tens of thousands of pounds to add in these extras and touch wood the whole 
the two, the three or four years that we drove the CX-5, never had a problem with it. Only had to take it into the garage one time, and that was because we overloaded the boot with compost and we did something funny to the suspension, but that was our fault. And I feel like that is a real, what's the word, testament to Mazda, the fact that we didn't have to take it into a garage. So anyway, that's our CX-5. So Mazda got back in touch and said, Josie, we have just launched the MX-30. That is this car right here. Would you like to try it out? So I said, yes, please. <laughs> As you know, Charlie and I have been thinking about getting an electric car. There are a few hurdles um, when it comes to like charging, but I think for the zipping around journeys, and if we had like a typical commute, like drive to a train station or drive to an office every day, could plug it in and have that as part of our routine it wouldn't be a problem but i think that's just something that you have to get into a routine for um but yeah i snapped up the opportunity to try out the mx30 so here it is so the mx30 is three door so two at the front um and then obviously the boot i think they should be called two doors because the boot is not a door whereas the cx5 is a five door so this is smaller this is more of a kind of zipping around car i love the interiors so beautiful with this um kind of camel colored trim it's almost a little bit tweedy very very nice indeed i don't know if they have these op options for the cx5 so this let me check the website so i'm telling you the right thing i'm just gonna stand you up because <laughs> my arm is starting to ache okay all new Mazda MX-30, the first Mazda to achieve an overall five-star rating under the new stringent 2020 Euro NCAP crash-worthiness ratings. Also named the favourite electric car in the 2021 DrivingElectric.com awards. Reinvention of the electric car for the everyday, contemporary design meets effortless style with freestyle doors and a spacious premium interior. So this is Mazda's very first all-electric vehicle. The range, which is very important on an all-electric, is 124 miles, so definitely enough range for all of our travelling. In 36 minutes, you can go from a 20% to an 80% rapid charge. That's also amazing. And it's got an eight year battery warranty, 0% CO2 emissions, 1% benefit in kind, four pence per mile. That's amazing. Um, so yes, here it is. So this is what I'm looking at. This is the dash. This is what you're looking at down below. So we've got all the controls and then you have got the screen up here, which has got the, the sat nav in it. And Charlie and I always found them at the sat nav in our CX-5 to be amazing. So I'm sure this is the same system. It looks very familiar. You've got the controls on the wheel, almost like corky down here, but I love this color combination. Again, you've got the, um, brown kind of tan shade on here this is like a little herringbone tweed and then the leather spacious back seats with the same trim you could fit three people in there i think the middle back seat is a little bit narrow doesn't have any uh roof light or roof what you call it glass section maybe that is an option on some of the vehicles or maybe it's to do with the crash worthiness that it doesn't have that what have we got up here sunglasses holder SOS button. Yeah, very, very nice. Because it's Friday, Charlie and I do usually go out for dinner or go out on a bit of a, a date afternoon. We're both very busy with work and straw top stuff at the moment, so we're not um, doing a date day today. We are both working at home, but I think we'll probably head out somewhere for dinner, even if it is just um, to get a nice bougie ready meal from Dalesford. So I'll give it its first test drive later but um, I wanted to show it to you in the daylight because it's getting dark at like half three these days, which is just, just not good enough. In case you're wondering what car you're seeing me drive over the next couple of weeks, Mazda, I'm not gonna wanna give it back. <laughs> this is what happens when I test drive a Mazda. I end up needing to keep it. So yeah, this could be the start of a new Mazda love affair. <laughs> okay, I've put the car into reverse. And now, ooh, very good quality reverse camera. I just love with electric cars that you don't have any noise whatsoever. It feels so futuristic. Um, so I'm gonna reverse the car into our carport. In the boot, there is a three pin charger, which is obviously um, not gonna be as fast as the proper electric car chargers, but at least it means I can charge it from home and hopefully overnight, it should get enough battery. We shall see. Um, okay, I need to actually pull forward, right? Slip it into, woohoo! Just take your foot off the brake and it moves, which is amazing. I'm a bit far away from the accelerator. Okay, that should do the trick. Reverse. Okay. Very easy to drive, I love this. Right, okay, I'm gonna start turning. It's even got the like guiding lines as well, so you can see where the car's going to go. Am I gonna hit the wisteria? Possibly. 
That's <laughs> never been that good at traversing. I've completely buggered this up. Well, I must say, very polite sounding um, anti roll away engaged move shift lever into park. It is in park. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Success, we have a green light. That was bloomin' easy. Oh gosh, after all the stress we've had with other electric cars that we've tried, that was so easy. Okay, so it's plugged in over there by the fridge. Um, everything seems to be illuminated. Let's close the boot. Right, I don't know how long this will take, but I have a feeling overnight should, should do it. Let's just double check on the dashboard, charging. Ah, was that a timer? Did you see it said four hours, 40 minutes? So maybe that's how long it would take to get to fully charged, which is fine because we've already got a hundred miles. So, so far, I'm very impressed. Very, very impressed indeed. Obviously I've not gone on a road trip yet. Um, I do have a little road trip next week, but looking forward to trying it out over the next couple of weeks. So thank you Mazda for loaning me your MX-30. Okay, it's a couple of hours later. Charlie and I have both had a very productive afternoon getting lots of work bits done. Luckily, emails are usually a bit calmer on Friday, which gives you a chance to almost catch up and stay on top of everything. It's not even that cold out, but I felt like going all cozy. We're heading to, surprise, surprise, Dalesford <laughs> to get some lovely bits for dinner and also some uh, nice festive bits because we have got a very fun shoot happening at the house early next week and we need to get some festive bits and bobs for that. So I've just popped on um, this lovely wool, very warm, but actually not too thick and bulky coat from Theory, which is really, really lovely. This was very, very kindly sent by Theory. And my bobble hat is River Island. River Island have very, very, very kindly said that they are extending my 20% off early access to the cyber discount code, Josie20, until the 20th of November. And it's also now active in the US. Just remember the minimum order in the UK is 75 pounds and in the US is $100. So make sure you're hitting that minimum amount if you want to use the code. Anyway, let's go and test out the first journey in the electric Mazda and stock up on Dalesford mince pies. Serious testing of the MX-30 going through Craters oh. Ford. This is about as off-road as our journeys get, isn't it? Yeah, this, we've chosen probably the most off-road route um, that we could yes. to test this out, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't typically like driving in the dark, um, but I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, you probably won't, but something that I love about Mazda's is that their automatic headlights full beam is really, really reactive. Um, so that is amazing in this car. And I was also watching a review video of this car um, while I was having my lunch earlier. And I discovered via this video that this um, material here, which you might not be able to see at the moment, um, but you might have spotted it earlier, is actually made from recycled plastic bottles. The cork down on the central unit is made from recycled wine cork We'll have to do this in the daylight, I think, this yeah. bit. I did, I did show it earlier, yeah. I didn't know all these recycled facts. The leather behind me is vegan leather, and also the bit that I was describing as tweed on the um, body of the seat, which is really cozy at the moment because I've got my heated seat on, is made from recycled denim. So how amazing is that? I like, I think Mazda do, the things they do extremely well are the technology. Yeah. And I tell you what, buying the Land Rover, <clears throat> what that has shown us, don't get me wrong, we adore the Land Rover, and there are a lot of very good things about it. But what I will say is you really get value for money with Mazda with the technology oh, so because much. everything's included. Yeah. You know, like... Is it though? Because I realised that we didn't actually pick our CX-5. We got that as a pre-made car, didn't we? I think a lot of those things are are automatic choices. Well, even if they're not, like what we paid for the Mazda is pretty much the cost of what the extras cost in certain luxury cars. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I think it just depends, doesn't it, where you're at in your life yeah. and what your priorities are. When we lived in London, the technology was more of a priority. Yeah. Whereas when we live out here, maybe you could argue things like being an off-road car, yeah. as we're about to experience. Oh dear. I'm sorry, usually I'd offer to go up on the verge, but I don't know if I can in this little car. So we've got to the garden centre. It's a rather price. lovely wreath. It's nice and huge, isn't it? It'd be good for our front door. Wow. How much? 150. That's expensive. Yikes. That is expensive, but it is beautiful. 
Did we have a Dalesford wreath last year? Yeah, I bought you it. For my birthday. Cheers, mate. It's nice with the, um, are they teasels? The little sharp bits. I think it's pretty perfect. It is rather gorgeous. Well, this will be more to get us through to the runoffs Christmas, I would say. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's definitely the one before. I love that as well. You know, we have already got a Robin. Not this one. Not that one? No. Okay. He's really cute, isn't he? And he is cute. Sheep. This is going to be our countryside themed tree. Do you know what? That's just giving me an idea though. Um, we could put something festive in a watering can out the front of our house because that looks quite nice, isn't it? That does look nice, yeah. Yeah. And that is a poinsettia, so I stand corrected. What a little hedgehog. Should we get a hedgehog? I'm pretty sure we've already got it, but have we? you can get another one if you want. I don't think we've got the hedgehog. Hmm. I think we got Jack the hedgehog. Slightly better view of the coat. It's got a nice little wrap style tie. <laughs> so cozy. Every single time I come up here, I decide that this is how I want my Christmas table and they've done it again. They've rejigged and it's a really natural theme. So you've got some gray side plates, lots of, is this from a fir tree? And do we have any of them? Um, well, no, that is from a Christmas tree, isn't it? Is that? Well, I don't know. I actually really don't know. Because it we looks don't beautiful, doesn't it? Them, unfortunately. No. Whoever does the tablescapes here is just an utter genius. And can we get them to come to our house? Well. Little manger with some festive foliage. It's just fantastic. Like we See, definitely need to do something like this this Christmas. Pringle, once you pop, you don't stop. <laughs> you um, collecting all the bubbles? Yeah, these, these are nice actually, aren't they? They're quite mm. like a, they look a little bit antique-y. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> do you think? I have been second thoughts on those feather ones. And you don't like the feather ones? I don't know. I think if we're doing like a wildlife kind of tree. Yeah, yeah, true. I love I them. We've just been making the most of a little bit of free charge here at Dalesford. I say a little bit because I think you get five minutes free yeah, charge. <laughs> okay, considering the farmhouse gives you free. Anyway, a correction because I think earlier I told you it was a three door car, but actually it's a super jazzy it's mini very, it's back door. Well hidden actually. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, where was this car two, three years ago? Oh, it's such a good London that. car. Because you know when you're in London, you don't normally use a back seat that way. Yeah. Let's see how it is as a passenger. As much as we love living so close to Dalesford, it is a very dangerous place to have as our kind of our nearest supermarket, really. So, very quick Dalesford haul while the kettle boils because Charlie and I are seriously packing. Oh, can't show you that. <laughs> that is a gift for someone. Um, well, we picked up loads and loads. These are all little Christmas tree decorations, but I'm not going to get these all out now. Um, I'll probably do that tomorrow, but lots of really cute little Christmas decorations. We have got half dozen organic hen eggs, truly free range eggs. Um, potentially, in my opinion, the world's best mince pies. Now these are $8.99 <laughs> for a box of how many? Six? I don't know. I feel like there's maximum eight in here. Um, but I am going to do my mince pie chart <laughs> so that we can share our thoughts on the best mince pies for this Christmas. Uh, we've got some fresh egg Harper Deli for dinner tonight. So I'm going to pop that there for Charlie to cook with. We have got a couple of little um, practical yet also aesthetic things. So in straw top, we have got now, is it installed, did you say? 
the rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's from Devol Kitchens. A little <clears throat> rail that goes above the sink, so we're going to hang things like this, a brush and a chopping board um, above the rail in the kitchen. Then we have got quite literally the world's best tomato ketchup. If you know someone who's obsessed with ketchup, get them this for Christmas because they will be addicted. It is scrumptious. Um, organic tomato and oh, yeah. sauce, is that for so tonight? What we, well, depends on what you want with it tonight. What do you fancy? Oh, you... that's tomato and rocket. This is tomato and basil. Yeah. You know? Alexa, timer off. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did. Which, what, what do you fancy tonight? And tomato and chili. Yeah, they're um, really good to have. Yeah, I don't mind the tomato ones tonight, actually. Yeah? Oh, yes, and then lots of other ripped up in it. So, tomato and basil? Yes. Oh. Alexa, timer off! So, we've got three different tomato passatas and a mozzarella, which I think. Uh, burrata! Oh, it's an actual burrata. Uh, so, we'll shred that. Tonight. Charlie's favourite. Oh, yes, Charlie's favourite organic blueberry yogurt. Two tomato and basil. But these, I always like these um, pasta sauces for like lazy dinners. Don't yes. With the pine nuts. And then this one is filled with even, oh, did we get the uh, foliage out of the car? The berries and stuff. The, yeah. yeah. So we did also buy two uh, skimmiers with little red berries, a wreath, which we will put up uh, on Sunday, and um, a lovely terracotta pot with flowers overflowing out of it. This is also full of Christmas decorations. We did end up getting the Dalesford um, sausage dog Christmas decoration. It's not the best sausage dog, but he's got a but cute we've little got a, jump we've, that we've got a sausage dog tree. Yes, actually in my last vlog I went into the store and I found the hamper that has got all our sausage dog decorations. So yes, that is our little Dalesford haul. I'm now going to undo all of these Christmas decorations. Charlie's going to cook a scrummy dinner. And then are we going to put the stove on? Well, um, no, it's already 10 to 8. We'll be I don't think we'll now. put the stove on, but we'll put the pan on. Lovely. All right, chef. So how do we do this we super cheat. easy so, pasta? That goes in. Which one have we used? Tomato that and basil. Goes in. Hell of a lot. This is going to be enough pasta for about four or five people. Oh dear. Hell of a lot of black pepper. A little drizzle of olive oil. And then mix all that in. Doesn't look very good yet, but it will do. <laughs> I always think it's harder to mix tagliatelle. Yeah, you know, you've got to get it all even and distributed. We'll get the basil in there as well. Get that in there. Careful, there's a knife there. Thank you. Pine nuts. All our favourite things in a pasta. Mm. Bit of pecorino, enough to save enough for the top. Bit more black pepper. <laughs> oh. Messy. Look at that in there now. Oh! Oops. It's going everywhere. And here is the finished product: pasta with tomato sauce, burrata, and. Pecorino cheese and darlings as usual I'm going to end the vlog before we start eating so that I can relax afterwards So I hope you've enjoyed this no doubt very long vlog. Sorry the dogs are having a bit of a moment in the background Thank you for watching. I will see you very soon in the next one. Good night